Step two, the shutter. The shutter is right behind what's called a mirror box, which is basically a scales down, super precise mirror room that you'd see at a fair. When the light that you allow in from the aperture enters the mirror box, it reflects from these three mirrors to enter where you put your eye. But you'll notice whenever you take a picture on a DSLR camera, it goes black. Why does this happen? This is because that first mirror is actually a trap door sort of thing. So when you click the button, the mirror flips up and the light is allowed through to the shutter. What the freak is a shutter? The shutter is basically a curtain. When you take a picture, the curtain drops and allows light to pass through to the sensor. But the user gets to decide how long the curtain drops for and how much light is let through. This is called shutter speed because it's how fast the shutter drops for. The shutter speed can be super long, multiple seconds, giving a long exposure photo because the sensor is getting more exposure to light. Or it can be a thousandth of a second by flashing one curtain down while a second curtain from the top also comes down. This allows very little amount of lights to get to the sensor. Okay, that's cool and all, but how on earth can a sensor sense? Step three, the sensor. Kind of like a screen, an image sensor is made up of pixels, millions upon millions of them. But what do they do? Well, pretty much just the exact opposite of a screen. There's three layers to the sensor, the micro lens, the color filter, and the photo diode. All right, let's miss frizzle this thing and just look at one single pixel. This is a red pixel. There are three colors of pixels being red, green, and blue, which are three colors that can make up any color. This one's red. The micro lens is exactly what you'd think it is. It's just a really small lens. It focuses the light beams to the color filter. If the pixel is a red pixel, then the color filter only allows red light to pass through. This is like if you were to shine a flashlight over a red window. That's pretty much what the color filter does. So if you take a picture of a red apple on a green background, the red pixels where the apple is are going to receive a lot of light, while the blue and green pixels where the apple is will receive a very little amount of light. But on the part that receives the green background, the green pixels are going to receive a lot of light, while the blue and red pixels will not. But still, even when filtering, how do we record that light? The photodiode. This thing is basically just a mini solar panel. It will generate a certain amount of electricity depending on how much light hits it. So if a lot of light hits it, the photodiode is going to make a lot of electricity. And if it makes a lot of electricity, that pixel that's assigned to display the specific sensor is also going to get a lot of electricity and in turn be brighter. So back to our example with the apple, it's going to be red because the red pixels are getting more electricity than the green or blue pixels in that area. Then your camera saves how much electricity should go to each pixel by representing the voltage per pixel as ones and zeros. Congrats, you just took a picture. But that picture actually isn't free, definitely not in this economy. It's going to cost you one subscribe and I'll just flip the screen around there for you, so...